if you want to come down. Yes, I want to, uh, basically, Elise, I want to talk about the script, okay? Um, I'm quite bad. All right, <laughs> I was waiting for it. All right, and uh, for most people, do you know what the script is? Sharon, do you know what the script is? John? No? The script is, before you were born, you have written and designed your own life in this time. Okay? It means that you have chosen your identity, you have chosen your personality, you have chosen uh, your parents, your schools, where you're going to live, you have chosen your sex, you have chosen your religion. All right? Because one of the things that most people do in life is they turn around and they say, well, I didn't ask to be born. You know, I didn't want to be born a Catholic. I didn't want to be born a Muslim. I didn't want to be born this. And in the course, Jesus tells us uh, a very different story that is all planned, it's all written, and it's all scripted by us, ourselves, because everything in our lives is what we have wanted, we have desired. We must have been drunk when they wrote the script. <laughs> there is no exceptions to this. There's nothing in your life that you haven't desired to happen to manifest in your life. Now this tells you two things. It's really, it, it's really empowering and there's a lot of freedom in this if you can embrace this truth. Because if you don't embrace this, what you're really saying is, I'm a victim. I'm a victim of this body. I'm a victim of maybe the disability that this body holds. I'm a victim of my parents. I'm a victim of my teachers. The most important role for the ego in this world is the victim. So it will use anything and everything to get you to play a victim. Now, why would it do that? Why is it? Why are we so hell bent to play, play a victim? What does the victim give us? We're kind of not our fault. Exactly. We get to blame somebody else. Right. We're always trying to get rid of our own guilt. Okay. And we want to be separate. Okay. Don't underestimate how much you want to be separate. But we want to blame somebody else for it because it comes at a price. Separation comes at a big, big price. So what I want to do here just for you today is I want to just how the script works. Okay, so you know the three levels that I work on, all right? So, um, how do you draw it? All right, so it's kind of like this, okay? And then you have the one mind, right? So you have one, two, three. Now, has anybody copped on yet now? Remember this was the ego right mind? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the ego wrong mind. Okay? Now, can anybody fill in now for the first time? I'm gonna do this. Remember what it says, right? This was the decision maker? This is the ego wrong mind, this is the ego right mind. Come on, I'll buy a pint to the person who can fill it in now. Come on, it's. Which one was the ego in there? right mind or the ego wrong mind? I have, I have done this, I've given you all the information, especially those people who are in this, right? And I'm, I've been waiting for someone to come back and say, ah, oh, oh, that's what that is. So you're saying the fish in the middle? I'm saying the three bits. What are they? The we done, the what we have done these in the last two workshops. This persona, persona, the shadow, and the personality is the ego that we choose. The ego being the separate itself. Yeah. So what happens then, when we go up to this one? It's still the personality, yeah? So this is the true right mind. And this is the ego right mind. Which is the persona up here. And now we have the true right mind, which is the advanced teacher of God. Okay, remember we did that? Okay? So, you see what's happening here now, right? To move up here, we have to let go of the shadow. Alright? We still take our persona, because it's our persona now, it's personality, we want to go home. So we're aspiring to this 
concept that Jesus puts into the course by saying, you're the son of God. And the ego just loves that. <laughs> Do you know, we all love that. And that's what draws people into the course, is this ego part of it, who, wow, I, I'm the son of God. And you're the only one. You're the only son of God, Jesus says, which even enhances our own egos now. So you see the way Jesus very cleverly has used all of this to grab people's egos, personas, and pull them into the course. So he says, okay, at the beginning, what we're going to do here, leave your persona, but what we're going to work with is your ego rock man, your shadow. Okay? That's our special hits. The people who we love to hit, which is all our own self-hit, isn't it? So we let that go. And it's forgiveness, ATF, which takes us up the ladder, now into what's left is our persona, and here we have the true right mind. Sorry, sorry what, you, you have a T in the middle, is that the personality? Personality. Yeah, so the, personality. the bottom is the ego. So, it's the personality here also, because that is our ego, our separated self. Oh, yes. So this brings us to Elisha's point, all right, explaining what the script is. So we chose our personalities. So does everybody in the room know what their personality type is? You should, come on. You, you mean introvert or extrovert? Whatever, which one? Because I'm going to tell you now the personality types that are the people who are destined to awaken up in this lifetime. Do you want to hear it? Go on. All right, I was born an extrovert. They sure were. And it's impossible for an extrovert almost to waken up in this life. So I was forced into becoming an introvert. There are some introverts. Pretty sure I am. And I'll tell you, it was the most painful transition. I didn't give it up easy. Is an extrovert a person who thinks they know it all? No, an extrovert would be someone who is basically, they want to be the center of the attention, they want to, they want to, to make the world so real. You know, they're so ingrained into the center of the world. They want to be a star in the world. I mean, I played football and I wanted to be the center of attention, so I played the front and I scored all the goals. And I got my photo in the paper every week and I freaking loved it. <laughs> Do you know? And I used to go on to nightclubs, all right, and I wanted to be the center of attention. Everywhere I went, I wanted to be the center of attention. And then all of a sudden, all of that was taken away. And that was really painful. So now I'm the complete opposite of what I used to be. And this is what we're doing in the course. You know, we're giving up our special attachments. We're giving up our special relationships. So the introvert, who here's an introvert? Introvert, anybody else? Introvert? Clever introvert? Introvert? Who here is unconscientious? Who's here is agreeable? You can't be both. <laughs> what? Set it in. Who here is unconscious? Agreeable. Right. I'll tell you what they, what they, what they, they are, alright? Is openness is very easy to wake up. Alright? A closed personality is a lot tougher to you. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's a lot tougher. A conscientious person is going to be very tough to wake up. A non-conscientious person Okay, we'll find it a lot easier. Why? Is that because they don't ask too much questions? Sorry? Because they're not obeying. Jesus, you could have looked at Jesus, he was seen to be a uh, troublemaker. Do you know what I mean? Like, he, didn't play, he was seen not to be playing by the world's rules. Oh, I'm you a know? troublemaker, all right. Uh, he was seen to be very radical at the time and all of this, like, so he would have been unconscientious. But he was also very agreeable, he was very open, he was also an introvert. So you can see all the different types of personalities that fits in with. You see, there's certain types of personalities that are going to be fixed into the world. They're here to do stuff in the world. They're here maybe to make the world a better place. Sir, can you describe conscientious for me? It's someone who is basically wants everything perfect. You know, they're, they're, they're trying to get the world, you know, and their environment around the world. They're trying to get everything sitting perfect and they want everything in the right place. And they're very conscientious about their work. They're very conscientious about how they perceived all of these kind of things. A non-conscientious person doesn't... Doesn't get shy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which is a lot easier to drop that attachment to the world 
when you're not that conscientious about the world. Isn't that right? So you imagine the extrovert who wants to be the center of attention in the world. Well, the world is very real to that person, isn't it? Whereas the introvert is really happy within themselves. They're more within their center. Do you know? Doesn't this make sense? So when you're writing your script here, you're coming into the world here, all right, you choose your personality for exactly what you want to do in this lifetime. Okay? So if you're here to wake it up this lifetime, if you're here to do the course this time, if you're here to find the truth here and all of this, your personality has brought you to this point here now. Okay? So do we have to change our personality? Think about our personality and change it? Well, basically what you're going to be doing with the personality, this is your true personality here. This is the truest form of personality you can get here in the world. Is to become, is to become right-minded. Okay? And you know the characteristics of the teacher, of, advanced teacher of God. You know those ten characteristics. That is your new aspired persona. If you're doing a course of miracles, okay, that's your new persona that you're inspiring to be. You know, you're open-minded, openness. You're gentle. You're tolerant. You're honest. Honest. Trust all of those characteristics. If I don't, if I don't feel like going to work, right? And I ring up, I ring the boss up and I say, I'm dying with a pain in my stomach. That's Ooh. dishonest. But it's unconscientious. It's neither. It's neither dishonest and it's neither unconscientious. What's dishonest is you not forgiving someone. What's honest is you practicing forgiveness. Because otherwise you're in the story of what's right and wrong, what's true and what's false, what's honest, what's dishonest. That's the ego's version of honesty. I don't feel like going to work tomorrow, right? Cool. Okay, you're on tip. All right. We have a All right. Michael, can I ask you a question? Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't understand that if you're in the uh, at the part where you're writing your script, mm -hmm. wherever you are in that part, that's you. You're already separated. So how can you write into your script about? becoming, returning home as such. You, have, you have come here many lifetimes, okay? And you have been spiritually growing in every lifetime, okay? So maybe a thousand years ago, you're not as spiritually advanced now inside that you are now, okay? So you're, you are here to have different experiences in those lifetimes. So basically what you've done is over so many lifetimes, you've come here and you've had many, many different experiences. Okay? And you don't write your script alone. You have help to write. We all have spirit guides, you call them angels, ascended masters, archangels, whatever. We all have this uh, uh, guidance, the mighty companions that Jesus talks about in the Course. They're the people who, when we go back, say you went back in your last lifetime and you says, right, that's it. Okay? And you go into your life review and you look at your life, life review. And you look at it and you say, right, I've had enough. I want to have a script now. I want to go home. I want to go up. I don't want to keep going back down. All right? So now you sit down along with your mighty companions and you design a script that's going to give you the lessons. It's going to bring you to someone who has the truth, like the Course, like Jesus, uh, which is only one of many, all right? And you're, this is going to be your way home now. So you design a personality that's going to fit in with that. So are the ascended masters and whoever might assist, are they outside the ego system? Are they outside? They, they're, yeah, well, they're, 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 they're what, they would be above the battleground, as Ken Watnick would have said. They would be in the fifth dimension. They would be in the higher universe. Mm -hmm. The ego is basically the cycle of reincarnation. Would be here, right? Look at this. Okay, so this is the physical world here, and this is the spiritual universe, right? So this is where reincarnation goes. Okay, and you've been going like this through the spiritual universe to the physical universe for so long. All right, well your ascended masters and everything are up here in the higher universe. Okay, and that's 
who you have the help there of their knowledge, assistance, and everything to help you <coughs> choose a script that's going to give you the lessons. All right? So you're going to have a personality which is going to give you... Your personality is going to define your shadow and your persona. And what that means is, right, you're going to have people that you're going to aspire to. Because of the different type of personality that you have chosen, you're going to have certain people in your life now that you're going to aspire to. So let's say you have a, a, one personality, say Marie has a different personality. All right? So maybe Marie is aspiring to different people. She likes different books, she, does, she likes different spiritual teachers. Maybe you have different books and you aspire to others. So you can see now your personality is basically now defining your life here and it's giving you your lessons. And this is why, and this is so important to understand why Jesus says you follow no one else's path. Because we're not all the same personality. We don't all have the same lessons. You know, we don't all have the same problem with their shadow. You might have a problem with your shadow. Marie and Mary have different problems with their shadow different attributes. One thing might piss you off, it might piss her off, it might, you know what I mean like. So we all see, if we all write down different things, you know, we'll see that it all coming from our personality. You know, so our personality defines our persona. Our personality then also defines our shadow. So this is the script that we write from ourselves. So even here, the separated self here, the ego part, the personality, is still, this is why Jesus says it's the ego that writes the script. Because it's still not our true self. But it's our personality, who, our soul, who has basically advanced spiritually to a point where it's made the decision, I want to go home, I've had enough of this. It's like a child who could be out all day playing in the rain. You know, they get to say, I want to go home, you know, to stop with this. You know? So, you know, that's what it's like for us. This has been a playground where we have been coming here for many, many years, having every kind of experience. And we're just fed up with it and we're saying, right, I want to go home. Yeah. So it's not an easy choice or decision to do that. Okay, so this basically whole thing here, you could call it the separate itself. Yeah? And it's the separate itself, the persona, personality, and the shadow that's giving you these three components that must be brought in back into oneness. So does that... Does your shadow reflect your karma? Your karma? Yeah, or is that a concept? What is the karma? In your... In my... Your own... Your own forgiveness. Yeah, exactly. And that's what your shadow is. It's everything you hate about yourself. Like Jesus says in the Course, he says, what you see in another is what you haven't forgiven in yourself. That's what forgiveness is. So don't underestimate how much self-hate that we have. And then don't underestimate how much we want to see this self-hate in someone else. You know, you had the experience, you know, in the teacher's course about Jimmy Savile. Mm -hmm. You know, which was a great experience for everybody else that day, like, you know, you've helped so many people that day, it was unbelievable, like, you know, it really did, like, you know, because they got to see exactly them, you know, they weren't, you know, they were doing the same as yourself, like, they were kind of justifying it in a way, because they didn't want to say, you know, that self-hate that's in, that, that hate that I see or the disgust to see in this person has anything to do with me. You know, we're trying to get rid of it all the time, so don't underestimate that. So it gives us a great investment to see this disgust, this hate in someone else. Because that's the power and strength of denial. So you could say, yes, the shadow is our karma. What we haven't forgiven in ourselves. What we hate about ourselves. But you see the overall picture of this now. Sort of. So, the, yeah, sorry. So you have... Um, the guilt that's in the mind, so you come back here to project it out so as you don't feel it, is that right? And then there's the guilt that's in the mind that you come back here to heal. So there's a dual purpose to coming back. You look at everything in the world. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, if you open your eyes and look at everything in the world, it's a reflection of your mind. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. Everything in the world. Okay? But this is the way it works. The guilt in our mind will be manifested in many different forms. So you could see the guilt as someone who's murdered someone. You see the guilt as someone who's raped someone. You see the guilt as, say, a pedophile. You see this guilt manifested in many, many different forms. Okay, and this is why Jesus says in the Course, there's nothing as blinding as the perception of form. So we look at that from an ego's point of view and we say, oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. Oh, well, that's not too bad. But that's worse. And this, you know, so we're actually looking now outside and we're seeing, you know, all these different forms of guilt. And we're saying, this is different. And then we do the same with love, you know, for our family. You know, we have different love for our family, we have different love for our friends, we have different love for our partners. So we're, we're chopping everything up all the time and we're saying it's different. You know, this is the fragmentation. You know, it's the fragmentation. We fragment everything now. But the content of love is one and the content of guilt is one. So there's no difference in what, when you see anybody guilty of anything, it does, there's no hierarchy of illusions. The ego's saying there is. So everything that you see in the world is a reflection of what's going on inside your mind, like Ken Moffat used to say, the world is an outside picture of an inward condition. So you look very honestly at this and you recognize every part, the good and the bad, as a reflection of me. It's not true, but it's a story that I believe about myself. It's the story uh, of the dream. You know, that the ego has convinced me that this world is real and I'm really guilty. You know. But do you get the overall picture of the script? Yeah? Anybody any questions on that? Everybody got it. You got it, John? Can I ask? Sorry. Uh, go ahead. Uh, you have put in personality in where usually there would be decision maker. Yeah. If your personality is actually making the decisions here, you know, as an introvert personality, say, you know, you're making a decision, well, I, I, you know, I'm comfortable with my own environment. I don't need to go out to club the night and I don't need to be the center of attention. So who's making the decisions in your life? It's you as your personality, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. Well, who else do you think it would be? Um. Well, I always thought the personality, there was something underneath the personality. Oh, there is. Your true self. <laughs> yeah. Your true self is in there. Yeah. You know, but it's this personality is covering up your true self. Mm. You know, but there's never been a time now where your true self is more clear to you. It's becoming more clear to you because the personality now that you have chosen is leaving you the space for you to evolve into this advanced teacher of God or to be truly right-minded. Do you know? So that's the stepping stone here. You know, we go from here to here to here to one mind. Do you know? So you can't go from here to here to here. You know? So it's a gentle letting go. You see, there's a great transformation happening. And I said this in the teacher's course, right? And you know what the good news is? Because they're not in charge of it. It's happening under the surface. As you're sitting here every minute of every day, there's a transformation happening inside you. It's like the caterpillar. Okay? The caterpillar, what it does, it cocoons itself, it shuts itself out from the outside world, and on inside it goes to mush inside. It dissolves. Even the heart of the caterpillar dissolves. Everything dissolves. And it all happens automatically. The caterpillar doesn't have to decide to do it. It happens. It's a part of its evolution. It's a part of its awakening. And then one day, out of the mush, out of that soup, comes the most beautiful butterfly and gets up and flies away. Okay? So that's what's happening as you sit here now. But do you know what you are in charge of? Our thoughts. Huh? Our thoughts. No, you're in charge of the letting go. It's up to you to let go. Let go of your what? Let go of your attachments. Let go of your attachments to the world. 
and letting go of your attachments to your special relationships with the people who you really, really love and the people you really, really hate. Does no. that just constitute uh, not having expectations of them? Well, it can't, you, we all have emotional content connections with the people who are closest to us. And we expect and we have demands and we have needs and we have desires. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. It's not letting go. It's, yeah. it's, letting, it's not letting go of the people or of the friendships. It's no. letting go of the demands. It's, it's letting go of seeing them the way you see them. It's yeah. not about treating them anything different or saying anything different to them. It's all happening in your mind level. I help me, as Marie was saying, to see this person differently. And when you're helping to see this person differently, that person is a reflection of yourself. You're really saying is, help me to see myself differently. So you're in charge of the letting go. And here's the key. The longer you hang on, the more painful it's going to be. All right? So it's not a case of you sitting back and saying, right, I don't need to do nothing. Like most people in the course that read this line, I need to do nothing. So they sit back and they have the greatest expectation of all happening. Oh, sure, it says in the course they need to do nothing. I'm going to sit back and I'm going to do nothing. And that's exactly what they get, is nothing. Because they're doing nothing. Isn't that right? What they ask to do in the course is very clear. In these bottom levels, in these two levels, it's about surrender and letting go. You have work to do from here to here. And when you get to here, you have more work to do because it's your persona you must drop. Here, you're dropping your shadow, which is all your special hits, which is really everything you hate about yourself. Here, you're asked to drop your persona. And this is everything that you love. All your special people in your life, your special attachments, your special relationships, which is really all the specialness that you love about yourself. So this is a really simple course. You can't get more simpler. And it's up to you when you wake it up. <laughs> Somebody waking you up there. <laughs> so, you know, that's the story here of the script. Okay, there is a, a, your script is designed to help you to give you everything, every tool, every facility, everything about your personality, everything about your persona, everything about your shadow. You're getting all the information and it's about letting go of all of this. It's the separated self. And the choice comes down to this, do I want to stay separate or do I want to go home? That's what your script was about. I'm everybody that's in this room and everybody that's doing A Course in Miracles, the reason why you're doing A Course in Miracles is because this is the choice you've already made. So all you have to do now is try to understand that choice. Okay? Which is going to be very difficult for you to do that because it's a paradox. Because the person who's trying to understand the choice is the same person that you're trying to let go of. And people say, I don't understand that. I don't understand ATF. I don't understand really how complete forgiveness works. The reason why you don't understand it is because you don't want to understand it because the person who's looking for the understanding is exactly what that tool is going to dissolve. So it's kind of like the turkey voting for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The poor turkey said, what Christmas? You know, well, there is no such thing as Christmas. You know, don't worry about Christmas. No. Turkey knows if I vote for Christmas, that's the end of me. So you can see the personality here, right? There is a paradox that's going to happen with the personality because the personality is you as a separated self, or as most people think, it's me as an ego. And like I wrote in my book about the ego and enlightenment. The ego wants to be enlightened. The ego wants to waken up which is the biggest paradox of all, because you have to let the ego go for you to waken up. 